Um, my name's Megan. I am here from Creative Scotland. Um, and I'm going to just give a little chat about different elements of Creative Scotland and potentially where you guys would have like somewhere that you would see that would be a good route for funding and kind of explain it because it's a very large, scary website with lots of different parts of it. So I'm going to try and explain it a little bit more. Um, so yeah, let's start then. Okay, let's try. So yeah, um, I'm, the, I'm a creative learning officer and I work within the music, youth music initiative team. Um, creative Scotland is the national funding body of Scotland, so we fund most and all art forms across. So we've got a visual arts team, a music team, a literature team, and I work in the creative learning team. So that's everything to do with youth arts, including youth music, which is probably of interest to you guys. So we've moved to the next slide. So to explain a little bit about how Creative Scotland gets all its money, we are partially funded directly from the Scottish Government, and that includes my fund that I manage, which is the Youth Music Initiative, and then we also distribute national lottery funding. So it's our job to sort of decide and assess applications based on the public benefit, because it's public funds, taxpayers' money, um, that it truly reflects the current climate of arts and culture, what people are making, what people are interested in, um, that it's adhering to the um, government's strategic priorities of what we're putting out in terms of policy, and also that we are adhering to the cultural strategy, which is um, the Scottish government's cultural strategy, which is a very long document, but a very important one. So, um, applying for funding. So there's quite, I I'll, I'll think I'll speak about it in kind of four main areas. When you're looking to look at funding, there's two different types of funds in Creative Scotland. There's the open fund, which anyone can apply for at any time. It's got no deadline. And then there's targeted funds, like the Youth Music Initiative funds that I run. So within the open fund, there's kind of four areas that you need to think about when you're opening that document, opening that application form. It's artistic ambition. Now that's, what am I actually trying to do here? What is my artistic drive for doing this project? Where does it come from? What does it look like? What is it developing from? Then you've got engagement, and that's who am I working with? Why am I dropping into an area and doing a project when no one's asked for it? Or am I... I've really worked with these people and we've really created this wonderful thing and I, I think it would be a huge benefit to my community, my artistic community. And then you've got the more practical part, which is management and risk. Do you know how to write a budget? Have you managed funds before? Can you explain to us what you do if X, Y or Z happens? And then the last part would be those strategic priorities that I spoke about earlier. That's equalities, diversity, inclusion. Fair work? Are people getting paid properly? Are people in decent contracts? Are people working for free? If they are, how are they being, you know, are they getting their dinner? Are they getting their food? Are they getting their transport? And then the third one would be environmental sustainability. How are you thinking about the climate crisis? Because I think that's kind of very important when we consider any project. So I've sort of put that down for you. Um, you know, can we go back one? Sorry. So what's your project? What do you want to do? when and where, like all these practical questions, but it's in those kind of four categories, artistic ambition, engagement, management and risk, strategic priorities. And I think if you think about it like that, the application form makes a lot more sense, okay? That's how we read it, and that's how we look at it. But it's quite simple what we're asking if you look at these as sort of questions. So um, do you want to move to the next one? So this is probably the most relevant fund when we're talking about artistic projects from individuals, musicians. I know that we're a varied group here. There might be musicians, tutors, teachers, uh, producers, all sorts of different uh, people. So individuals, that's a, um, that would fund a creative project that's led by one or a collective of artists or individuals. You don't have to be a charity. You don't have to be registered anywhere. It's you're an individual artist that's going to manage public funds. So um, that could be, you know, 
creating your EP, recording your music, going on tour. But within that, we would have to see those four things coming through. How, how is this contributing? Uh, so that's the first one, and it's um, up to two years and between £500 and 100 k So you can imagine the varied amount of uh, <laughs> applications that we get. And that's across all, all different um, artistic art forms. So not just music, we also get literature, everything else. Uh, can we have the next one? Uh, so the other one is the Open Fund for Organisations. So that's if you were working within an organisation and as an organisation you applied for money to do a project. Maybe you're an artist in that project and you contribute to the application. But this is a slightly different funding that's for uh, 18 months and it's between 1,010 and 100,000. Um, it's the same application, it's just the kind of who's applying. Um, but again, those four things would come into action as well. Now, and I'm going to move on now to the why am I. So is there any questions around Open Fund? No? Do you have one? Oh, sorry, is this the wrong thing? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I would say individuals. But you would apply as like two artists or three artists. Or you could have your, your collective name there, but there would be one contact person that would be in charge of all the emails and everything like that. Okay, great question though. Because yeah, it can be quite difficult to know what's a collective, what's an organization. So why am I? Um, the Youth Music Initiative is a directly funded part of Creative Scotland. We've got about nine million that we spend every year. But seven and a half of that is for local authorities. That's music making in school. Um, and then we've got this 1.5 that I manage, which is for access to music and strengthening music. Now those projects are a really specific application for people who are creating music projects with young people. And that can be early years all the way up to 25 or all the way up to 30 if they're, they have protective characteristics or they're disabled. So. It's a really, really, really wide range in fund, but it is focused on uh, um, increasing opportunities for music making for young people outside of a school environment. So it might be of interest to people who here who are tutors, who already work with young people. This is probably a better fund to look at because it's not the open fund, so it's less competitive and it's really targeted. Um, so yeah, we work with lots and lots of different organizations and individual artists as well. Can I have the next slide? So there's four strands of the YMI. There's a formula fund, which is the one I was talking about, about local authorities. So that's all the sort of music making activities you have in your school. Um, then we've got access to music. That's projects outside of the school environment when you're working with young people to create music. Then we've got the strengthening, which is for people to kind of and strengthen the youth music sector. So that's conferences like, like this, that's creating an, um, learning environments where professionals can come together and learn from each other. So that's, a, that's part of our fund as well. And then I think a quite an interesting one for this group is the YMI Training and uh, C CPD Fund. Now that's run by the Scottish Music Centre in Glasgow. And that is up to a thousand pounds. You can apply directly to them. It's a pretty simple application form. And that's for your own artistic development. So are you, have you taught music before, but you want to learn more about how to work with a specific group of young people? Uh, do you want to go to a conference because you think it will, you know, you want to travel somewhere, do you think it will really add to your, 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 um, your work? <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you can apply to that as an individual and it's up to a thousand pounds. So there's kind of a couple of different options. Uh, can I have the next one? Yeah, again, I'm not going to go through this again because I'm a bit, I'm coming up to time, what am I on? I'm a bit, I'll, I'll get in a minute. So I think this is a really useful resource I wanted to highlight to you. I've been a freelancer before. I'm assuming a lot of you are freelancers. This is our illustrated freelancer's guide. It gives you an overview of the best practice that you should expect as a freelancer and how you should... Um, work as a freelancer. It's a really, it was created by artists. I think it's a really, really interesting, um, useful resource for people that are entering into the freelance 
game because it is very <laughs> hard to navigate. And it's good to know what what's the music union rates? What am I supposed to be getting paid? What is this contract? How am, how am I getting covered to my travel? You know, all those things. This is a really clear way of knowing that and advocating for yourself. Uh, the next one. And this, on the other side, is our illustrated fair work guide. And that's best practice for people who, organisations who hire musicians and freelance artists. So this is how you would be like, hold on a minute, this contract is actually against the fair work guide. And I think that we should. So it's really good to understand what you should expect as, a, as someone who works in the um, art sector as well. So those are two really useful resources and I'm sure that they can be shared with you after this. And then, yeah, in general, looking at different organisations that have other funds across the UK. Not everyone, some people are in Scotland for a short amount of time and then they're going somewhere else. There's similar funds across the other uh, three nations. We've got the Musicians Union. It's really good to know what you should be getting paid. Youth Music's coming up next. And our next one is just some other resources from Creative Scotland website. If you're trying to navigate um, funding applications. We do provide everything in plain text. We do um, sessions for people to try and really unpick how to do these applications because it can be quite complicated. So I hope I've sort of explained a few different options that would be available to you. And then, um, yeah, we can take questions at the end. Thank you very much. Uh, hiya, um, I'm Asia, um, I'm from Youth Music, and I have to be honest with you all, I've made a boo-boo, and I did have a presentation, but I sent it in the wrong file format. So we're going to do a bit of an ad-lib today. Um, but just to sort of follow on, so Youth Music is a charitable funder. So similar to Creative Scotland, we provide grants to organisations and individuals to run music-making projects or to provide career development opportunities for young musicians. Um, we've been around for about 25 years and we do work across the UK but we are primarily funded via the National Lottery through Arts Council England so some of our funds are restricted to English only organisations. But we did receive funding um, a couple of years ago which has enabled us to sort of expand our reach into the nations which is brilliant for me, I live in Glasgow um, and it makes it my job a lot easier. Um, but we believe as an organisation that every child and young person should have the opportunity to change their life through music, but not everyone gets the opportunity because of who they are, where they come from, what they're going through and the barriers that they face. So all of our work is centred on that, providing equitable access so that everyone can make, learn and earn in music. The majority of our funding goes towards organisations, so again, for those of you who are practitioners, tutors, or working within organisations, you know, where you're running a music making project and that organisation might want to start something new or um, run something, you know, on top of the programme that they're currently running, you could apply to youth music funding for that. But the thing that I wanted to come specifically and talk to you all about today is our youth music next gen fund. So, we set up the Next Gen Fund, I think in 2021, and it was as a result of a large piece of consultation work that we did with all of the organizations that have been funded over the sort of 25 years of youth music's work. And we went and talked directly to the young people on these projects, and what we heard was that for a lot of them, you know, there's this gap between education and industry, and those first steps into, you know, you as an artist or as a future music industry professional, getting that opportunity to run your own project and also that funding is kind of scary, kind of inaccessible. You don't quite know where to start. And for a lot of the larger grant schemes, you know, you have to be demonstrating a certain amount of track record. So we set up the Youth Music Next Gen Fund um, and we've been running it, yeah, since 2021. We've done eight rounds and have supported over 200 young people so far. Um, it's targeted specifically at 18 to 25 year olds or up to 30 year olds if you identify as deaf, disabled or neurodivergent. And it's for you to run your own creative music project, whether you're an artist, a songwriter, a producer, or also if you're looking to sort of expand your role into sort of the music industry side or create your own music business. So you don't have to be a performing artist. You could also work in a behind the scenes role or want to develop that area of your career. You can apply for up to two and a half thousand pounds. Um, and like I said, we take a sort of broad church approach to 
what kinds of activity you can deliver. So lots of people apply for you know, creating and releasing your first EP, but also you could apply for sort of creative development and professional development. Uh, we've had some really exciting music industry projects. So there's a sustainable merchandise project that someone's running at the moment, which is really cool. Um, we can support things like if you want to be a radio journalist, uh, start your own community platform or blog or a series of events or you know you want to develop your promotional skills and sort of setting up and running a series of events supporting your community. Um, we're particularly interested in supporting um, young people who are facing those financial barriers to delivering those projects themselves. So it's not the fund for you if you have you know, signs to a label or a publishing company. Um, we're likely to prioritize those people who don't have previous track record of getting large funding support or um, who sort of... Uh, oh, completely lost my train of thought there. <laughs> or who are, like, are already in full-time employment in the music industry in the area that they want to progress in. Um, you can apply for costs that are associated with the delivery of the project. So of the two and a half thousand pounds, what I think is really great about this fund is we've already allocated 500 pounds to you as the applicant if you are successful for your time to create. Lots of young creatives, particularly within the popular music industries, don't value their time or the effort that they're putting in to run the projects, to write the songs. And you know, I think Creative Scotland's fair work principles are fantastic. And for us, you know, we want you to value your time. So 500 pounds of that application is already set aside for you as a wage for your project if you're successful. You can then apply for, you know, cost associated with delivering the project. And we put some restrictions on certain areas, and that's because we want to encourage you to think about the sort of breadth of activity and your creative development through the project. So we, you can apply for project costs such as recording, mixing, mastering, session musicians, um, but you can also apply for marketing costs, and we cap those at 500 pounds. And that's because we want to encourage you to think creatively about how you're going to market yourself, develop those skills, um, you know, it's great to be able to pay for PR or pay for someone to support you, but think a little bit creatively about how you can skill yourself so that what you get out of this project will enable you to apply those skills for the next release and then the next release and then the next release. You can also apply for equipment, so that's software and hardware that you might need to be able to deliver the project that's going to be an asset to you for your future releases as well. And again, that's capped at £500. You can also apply for training, so professional or creative development of up to £200, so upskilling yourself to be able to deliver the project. Um, travel costs, you know, sometimes you need to bring collaborators to you. Sometimes you can work remotely, and I think we've all learned through the pandemic that sometimes you can get some really brilliant collaborations remotely, but if there are, you know, costs associated with traveling, you can apply for those as well. Um, and also, if you identify as deaf, disabled, or neurodivergent, there is a personal access budget that you can apply for on top of that two and a half thousand pounds. And that's for the costs that you need to be able to deliver the project. So that could be British Sign Language interpreters, personal assistance in terms of you know delivering the work, and all of those associated <coughs> costs. Um, I sort of Kit sort of asked whether we could talk about like top tips a little bit in terms of applying for funding. And the first thing I would say is you're doing a brilliant job by being here and come and chat to us afterwards. You know, we want to hear your questions. We work in funding because we like, you know, to be able to listen and support and help you write the best applications that you can. Um, the sort of second thing I would say for every funder is you know, go on the website, use all of the resources that we have, um, you know, watch the videos, read the guidance, because it's really important that you know that you're the right fit for the funds you're applying for. And, and a lot of funders will ask you, you know, what's your career history today? What is it that you want to do? What do you want to get out of it? And so really knowing what the fund is looking for is, is great. Um, and it also means that you're not putting in any applications where, unfortunately, you're ineligible. So we will all have things that un we can't support. So for us, international activity we can't support. Um, everything has to be based in the UK. Um, so just make sure that you've read through that, because unfortunately, some people put applications in, and it's they're ineligible, and we can't support it. And then you've wasted all of that brilliant effort that you put together in writing the application. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, Really, really take the time to think about where you are in your career now and what the funding, you know, the opportunity that's being presented, how you're going to deliver that. So thinking about who do you want to work with? How much is it going to cost you? 
what's the timeline and what is it that you want to get out of it? How is this project going to enable you to make that step change, take you to that sort of next level of your career? And then think about m making sure that you're telling that to us really clearly. So use things like bullet points, use things like you know, putting in evidence that you've done the research, names, putting in the detail. You don't have to speak in sort of, you know, florid language when you're talking to a funder. What we want to know and see clearly is what you want to do, how you're going to do it, what's the output going to be for you. Another thing that is really important is a lot of funders within the music industry will ask for a musical link. Please make it accessible to us. The amount of people that send us password protected links and then I'm like, we can't see that. And make sure that it's you know a really strong example of your most recent work that you're most proud of. And the thing that gives us, you know, gets us excited about the project that you're applying for. Like we all love music. We all love working in it. So giving us a taster of what the project's gonna be like can be really exciting. Um, and the same thing around social media as well. Like, we don't expect you to have millions and millions of followers. We don't, we understand that you're at the very beginnings of your career, but showing us that you're an active music creator, showing us that you're, you know, you are doing stuff, you are constantly, you know, working and trying to sort of release things and figure it out. And, you know, that, that's what we need to see. We don't need to see big streaming numbers. We don't need to see the fat followers, but we just need to see that you're active and that you're committed and you're doing stuff. Um, how long have I got? It's on now. Um, but if you want to come and chat afterwards, we'll be around this afternoon, so come find us. Hello. If you could... Yeah, OK. Um, so I'm Honey. Um, I'm a music manager. Uh, I thought I'd give a little bit of background and then our experience with funding. Um, we'll come on to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I became a music manager in 2021, a week after I stepped down as vice president of a social enterprise and a week before I was meant to move to Malaysia. Um, <laughs> it was Leif, the artist that I now manage, he FaceTimed me and he asked me a question that I'd never really considered. I thought he was going to ask me to, you know, help him plan a social media campaign or just call me up and tell me a stupid story like he usually does. Um, but he asked me if I wanted to manage him. And I said yes, because it felt like the natural progression at that point. Um, I'd been assisting in a music management company for two and a half years at that point. And yeah, we just sort of kicked it off from there. Um, we then started discussing what his next project would be. He'd released three singles previously, and he wanted to release an EP, and it was gonna be in a completely different genre, and we started having all these ideas spiraling around our heads. He wanted Greek goddesses feeding him grapes <laughs> um, in the photo shoot, and we realized, you know, we're probably gonna need some funding to pull this all off. Um, so, we started the Creative Scotland application. Um, we did it for the individual. And it's a pretty lengthy process, <laughs> not to sugarcoat it. Um, it's about a 40 plus page application. I still have nightmares about it. Um, but yes, yeah, so we got you know brainstorming, discussing, writing, reviewing. Um, and then eventually we got to the point where we finished the application. Um, and it takes eight weeks for it to be um, processed to see if you've been successful. So submitted it. And then, sure enough, eight weeks later, an email pings into my inbox. And I literally jumped <laughs> to see if we'd been successful. And um, I read it. And there it was, application unsuccessful. It was like a dagger in my heart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we took on the feedback and uh, we resubmitted the application and then eight weeks later we then got another email through pinged into my inbox and our application was successful so that meant I'll tell you how much we got because I feel like no one ever tells you how much money they get they just tell you the range so 500 to 100k is it's a vast difference 
And I think being a new artist, you're a bit like, well, do I just put in for 500? Or <laughs> like, what are the actual costs that are gonna go into this? Um, so we ended up getting 14,000 pounds um, and it was a thousand pound less than what we actually applied for. So you're better to put in a higher amount, get given less. Um, yeah, because it is expensive being in the music industry and we love funding. <laughs> so <laughs> basically after that money came into our account, Leif was not automatically a superstar. Um, but we're working on it. Um, but it did get us to the start line to push his career. I would say that the Creative Scotland Oakland f Fund for Individuals is probably something that you don't do right at the beginning of your career, sort of where you're at a point where you really need like a push and like a leg in. Um, so yeah, that was able to get us to the start line to release our EP. And we realized that we needed to separate our dreams, which were headlining festivals and selling out tours, from our targets. So that was things like delivering and creating the EP, changing our distributor, um, and just doing a headline show as well. So we were able to deliver on all of those targets in 12 months. Uh, and I knew I needed to speak to as many people as possible as I could in the music industry to make that happen. But not only did this fund allow us to create this wonderful thing right here, uh, it also gave us time to evaluate our artist business, as well as give Leif time to create and actually put out the EP, um, as well as it gave us space to fail. Um, it allowed us to you know, reevaluate, really dig into what is working and what isn't working and pivot. Um, and keep moving forward, which I think is really important. So, some of the highlights from our funds is here. So, these are some of the music videos that we were able to create. Uh, it's a four track EP, uh, and we've got <laughs> I Wanna Love. We actually filmed that um, in, what's the name of that place called? Vega. <laughs> it's a bowling alley, a rooftop bowling alley in Glasgow. And you can't really see it there, but Leif is playing a guitar on his knees. And then this one was the Feel It music video. We did a short version because of the, our plague TikTok generation. Uh, and he's a horse whisperer. And then we, were, we actually submitted our latest single to Spotify. Um, and we got accepted to go and record it at um, Spotify Metropolis Studios in London, which was an unreal experience. Got to play Freddie Mercury's piano, uh, and it was recorded, it's worked on and recorded by a guy who's worked with Kendrick Lamar, Ray. Um, yeah, he was super cool. And then the middle photo is Leif's headline show. So that was at King Tut's. It was a fabulous night. Yeah, it was packed, everyone was singing back the songs, it was great, and then this was me at a conference down in London last year, um, and I found it super insightful to be able to go out and meet people from the wider industry as well. So, that's some of the things that we've been allowed to do, which has been fabulous. Uh, and I'll finish on just, this is the EP that is now out. There is a QR code there because <laughs> never miss an opportunity if you would like to scan it and listen. Um, but also that QR code has a story because I had it traumatized into me when I went to that conference that you should never miss an opportunity. Um, a guy who booked for a stadium in Sweden um, ridiculed me for not having a QR code as my screensaver on my phone for my artist. So now it comes everywhere with me. <laughs> and if you'd like to scan it later, um, I'd be more than happy to. Thank you. <laughs>